If you've been struggling to find out what settings you should use in the AMD Adrenaline Control Panel for Escape from Tarkov, you've come to the right place. I've spent just under four hours doing some testing and rebooting and going back and forth trying to figure out what settings worked and what didn't, and I think I have some good advice overall to share with you so that you have a better understanding of the different settings and you can make adjustments accordingly based on your specific needs. This is not going to be one of those videos where I just tell you what to set because that's not how this works. It's going to change based on what setup you have. So if this type of video helps you out, make sure to hit the usual buttons down below, liking and subscribing. And more importantly, if you have any other big questions or concerns or comments about the video, make sure to leave them in the comments below or inside of my Discord, which will be the first link in the video description. I highly recommend joining that if you have any sort of performance issues in Tarkov, and we can help you out in there. Or if you'd like to ask me directly, there is always my streams. I stream on Friday at 6.30 p.m. CST and Sunday at 1.30 p.m. CST. So make sure to tune into either of those and we'll be able to help you out if you have any major issues. So now to get into the meat of the video. I have actually recorded this once, but the recording ended up being 45 to 50 minutes. So I'm going to try to explain everything uh, in as concise of a way as possible so that this video doesn't run on for an eternity. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Firstly, if you have this AMD assistant here, make sure you turn this off as we'll set everything ourselves and make sure that it's ideal for Escape from Tarkov. And next, you're going to want to go over to the gaming tab. Once you're in here, go to graphics and you're going to see the global settings right here. You're going to see several different defaults. You're going to have the HyperX quality, HyperX Eco, and of course, the default profile. We're going to start from the default profile and move from there. But of course, if you would like to play around with any of these, you're more than welcome to. They just basically set these to different defaults based on their description. So starting off, Radeon Super Resolution is essentially a driver-based version of FSR 1.0 inside of Escape from Tarkov. Because it's already inside of the game, you could just use that one inside of the game and achieve a better result from there. Not to mention it has FSR 2.2, which is arguably the better upscaler than RSR or FSR 1.0. However, this would be good for games that don't directly support any sort of upscaling, and if you wanted to use this, you'd simply turn it on and then set whatever game you're playing to be a lower resolution than the base resolution of your monitor. In this case though, we don't really need this for Tarkov as generally we are CPU bound, meaning that our GPU is not 100% usage, and subsequently, that means that we will not get any performance boost from upscaling. However, if you have determined that you are GPU bottlenecked, and if you need help with that, I'll link a video down below explaining that, then this would be good if FSR wasn't already implemented in the game. The reason why you'd want to use FSR over RSR is because RSR will also need to upscale all the UI elements, while FSR does not. It excludes those elements, so those look like native, whereas with RSR, they're going to look a bit more blurry. Hence why I recommend using FSR instead, where it's directly implemented, and it is in Tarkov. Next, you got AMD Fluid Motion Frames, or as you might also hear it called, AFMF. Fluid Motion Frames are frame generation, if you've heard of that. Pretty much what it does is it puts a fake frame that it interpolates in between two real frames, basically making the transition from one frame to the next smoother. It does not double your FPS directly because those frames that it's putting in are fake frames. You don't actually get to put in input during those fake frames. Really what this does is it helps you with the smoothness of the game more than anything really. Because those are also fake frames, it means that your inputs may be slightly more delayed than usual, and that's why they tend to recommend to combo fluid motion frames with Radeon Anti-Lag, which, if you've used an NVIDIA GPU before, is kind of similar to low latency mode that NVIDIA Control Panel has inside of the driver. Radeon Anti-Lag is more specifically related to the frame pacing and making sure that that's set up correctly, and it can actually help with the stuttery feeling of the game sometimes. It depends on the game though, and for certain titles, it can actually do the opposite and destroy your frame pacing. I tried to run some tests and I ran some scab rays trying to turn it on and off to see the difference, but I really could not find a frame pacing difference between either because in both circumstances, the frame pacing was awful <laughs> in online. So kind of hard for me to find a difference when they both just suck. Furthermore, like I said previously, this helps best, as it says here, in GPU bottleneck scenarios, meaning that if you are running a higher end NVIDIA or AMD GPU, excuse me, and you're not hitting 100% usage on your GPU, AMD's 
anti-lag isn't going to help with your latency as much. My recommendation for you with anti-lag is to try it on and see if your game feels more responsive, but if you notice a significant increase in the stutteriness of the game over the course of several raids, then I would switch this back off. Again though, don't make it placebo. You're going to need to run this for a good while to see if it's actually genuinely better or worse than having it off. Next is Radeon Boost, but this doesn't actually apply to Tarkov. Regardless, just so you know, Radeon Boost basically lowers the resolution of a game by a factor that you can see right here. You can set a maximum resolution change, and that occurs when you're doing quick flicks with your mouse. So if you're trying to quickly move around, the resolution actually dynamically lowers to give you more frames during that movement to give you smoother movement. However, I tend to notice that reduction because I have a fairly good and pricey monitor that you can pretty clearly see the reduction in the resolution during those big swipes. Because of that reduction in clarity, I think this is not really worth your time to use in most scenarios, and I would just leave this off. You can't use it in Tarkov anyway though, but I figured I'd still cover it here so you knew. Radeon Chill really is a driver-based frame limiter, but more importantly, you can set a minimum frame rate for the game to run at if you say step away from the computer. This means that, for example, you could limit the frame rate to say 30 so that if you stepped away for a little while, your GPU is working less hard to render at 30 FPS than say if your cap was at 60. This reduces power draw and reduces temps when you're not directly using the device, but you still have the game open. If you wanted to use this as a frame limiter, you'd simply set the minimum and maximum to be the same, but Again, there are some other tools that you can use for that as well. Radeon image sharpening may be one of the things that you could use inside of this driver, but unfortunately, I mean, we already have the sharpening in game and you also have the post effect sharpening that you could use as well. So I don't really see a point to using Radeon image sharpening, but if you like how this looks when you apply it directly to Tarkov, then go ahead. Radeon enhanced sync is basically a version of vertical sync, if you know what that is. And if you don't, long story short, it syncs up frames are delivered to the monitor so that you don't have this weird tear effect when another frame is being pushed to the display and basically split down the middle with the original frame. You can sort of see that in this little graphic that I'm showing you. I believe this is from Wikipedia and you can see that there is a clear split there. If you get that a lot and that's annoying to you, using Radeon Enhanced Sync might help you. But the real benefit to Enhanced Sync is A, the input latency in comparison to regular V-Sync but also the fact that you can use this beyond your monitor's native refresh rate and it won't cause hiccups. However, I'm pretty sure for most of you, if not all of you, you're not going to be surpassing your monitor's refresh rate if you say have a monitor that is above 120 hertz or so. You are probably not hitting above that most of the time when you're playing more intensive maps in Tarkov unless you have a god tier setup. So I would recommend probably just sticking clear of this, but if tearing is a pain to you and you wanna reduce the latency from that tearing, Go ahead and turn that on. Also, the rumor mill is spinning and telling me that you can actually set this to always off for vertical refresh, uh, that's VSync, and then go into game and enable VSync to uncap your frame rate. Just keep in mind that it's going to be at crazy frame rate when you're in the menus and stuff like that, so you may need to add a manual cap through frame rate target control. This is a more consistent version of the Radeon Chill way to limit your frame rate, and you could limit this to whatever value you're tending to hit. And I would probably say, for example, if you're able to hit 75 FPS consistently, take it down to 70 or so, just so that you have a bit of room if you tend to fall in frame rate a little bit. If you'd rather leave it uncapped though, then well, obviously you'd leave this disabled. Next is this little set of uh, different settings here. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, I was not able to find any meaningful performance impact with any of these in any of my testing whatsoever. But for some of these, I do know that they only apply to DX9 applications, and I'll explain that as we go through. Even if these don't apply directly to the game, I'm still going to tell you guys about them and explain that just so you have an idea of what they are. Just know that they probably will not apply directly to the game. At least I've been trying to get them to apply and I haven't been able to see enough of a difference to warrant and say that it actually is applying. Anyway, here we go. Anti-aliasing basically reduces those shimmery bits on the edges of objects. They're called jagged edges most of the time. And those jagged edges that you can say see on screen right now, uh, this is supposed to help reduce those. So you can either use the application setting, enhance it or override it. If you're trying to get the best image quality at the cost of some performance, 
then you would want to enhance it to use not only the applications built in anti-aliasing, whether that be FXAA, TAA, or TAA high for Tarkov right now, you would set it to enhance, and then for the best quality, you would go to super sampling. Super sampling, though, can be very intensive because it has to basically run that anti-aliasing over the entire screen, while adaptive multi-sampling does the anti-aliasing for some transparent objects and other objects in the world, whereas multi-sampling ditches transparent objects and simply uses just some objects that need it on the screen. For morphological anti-aliasing, it's very minimal in its performance cost when it applies. But the issue is that it can cause a lot of blur on objects, so I tend to shy away from using this setting as you don't want to have that extra blur within Tarkov. It's blurry enough already. Anisotropic filtering I have confirmed in here only applies to DX9 applications here. But regardless, uh, I will tell you that anisotropic filtering basically improves the clarity of textures when they're displayed either at angles that aren't directly at the camera. So for example, if you're on streets of Tarkov on the street, looking at the street, that street texture isn't facing directly at you and has some sort of anisotropic filtering applied to it to clear it up. It does that clearing up for that or textures that are very far away that are sort of getting broken up because they don't have enough pixel count to properly display to your camera. With that being said, for best clarity, you would want to go for 16x, but that can have a substantial impact to your performance. Again, though, this is only in DirectX 9 applications, and Tarkov, at least right now, is DX11, meaning that this is probably not going to apply, and we'll just skip past this. I still want you to know what it does, though. Extra filtering quality, uh, here's a benchmark with, with high versus with performance uh, right here. If you can see the difference, um, let me know. And uh, yeah, just leave this at standard. I, there, I, I really can't see a difference here. For surface format optimization, if this was uh, applying, it would be ideal to leave it enabled, though I haven't seen any evidence of it directly applying. It basically uses a more AMD friendly version of processing textures to improve and streamline that process. So ideally, you'd want to have this enabled. It shouldn't give you any sort of image quality deficit either that you can notice. Tessellation mode is basically object LED quality on steroids, and you want to leave this at AMD optimized because for certain games that are artificially upping the tessellation factor, it's going to absolutely destroy the performance of your AMD card. And this makes sure that for those games that have been identified as a problem from AMD, that that tessellation mode is properly adjusted. You can set it to override application settings and then set your own maximum tessellation level to say 16x. As far as I've seen online, this is really only an issue on some older AMD cards, but you could also do this as well. It's also only a problem in select few games, like I saw Witcher 3 was one of them, for instance, with NVIDIA Hairworks. So don't worry about this setting too much. If you're worried, you can always set a maximum tessellation level in there and you'll be good. OpenGL triple buffering is for VSync and you can ignore it because again, it's for OpenGL applications only. 10-bit pixel format is for OpenGL again, so you don't need to worry about this either. And the shader cache, I would not reset unless you're having major issues as it should also reset when you update your drivers. This shader cache is important as it basically stores instructions for the graphics card instead of having the graphics card have to basically make those instructions again upon the launch of the game. You don't want to reset this as it can cause performance issues until those shaders are remade and stored again inside of your drive. All right, hopefully that was quicker. Oh God, we're at 21 minutes already, okay. Look, I tried my best to make that as quick as possible, okay? I tried, I really did. But without stalling anymore, let's get to display. AMD FreeSync will only be an option for you if you have a compatible monitor, but it basically reduces screen tearing in the same way that VSync does. It's an adaptive sync technology, so it should have less latency associated with it. And if you would like to use it, go ahead and use it. I am currently using it on this, but again, that is a personal preference sort of thing. Just know you'll probably have a little bit more latency when you are using this. I would highly recommend looking into virtual super resolution if you have a GPU that is being heavily CPU bottlenecked. If you have something that's like 50% usage, you probably have the headroom to use VSR. What this does is it sets at a higher than native resolution and then downscales that quote unquote to fit into your monitor. It can provide a lot of clarity at a distance, but again, it is extremely GPU intensive because you're basically running the game at a higher than native resolution. So if you're running at 1080p 
and you use this instead of 1440p, you're running the game at 1440p now. To combat this, you can actually use the FSR tech that's implemented in the game. So for example, if you are running into performance issues, running VSR at say 4K, but still want to use the benefits of VSR, you could then run at 4K and use FSR in game at say quality, which would be then 66% of 4K, and then would upscale from that 66% to 4K back to that 4K, which would then fit to your monitor's screen. You would get some of the clarity benefits of VSR and with less of a performance hit if you were, say, hitting your GPU bottleneck when using VSR. If you'd like to learn more about the benefits, I do have a video talking about DLDSR and DLSS, which is essentially NVIDIA's equivalent of VSR and FSR, that combination, and I would check that out. I may make a video specifically talking about VSR as well in the future, so stay tuned for that. The rest of the settings here we will ignore, but I will just give a quick shout out to Custom Color if you want to adjust the saturation and contrast of your display to make it easier for you to spot players in game. This is just another alternative to post effects here too. Yeah, swapping out here to record and stream, I would just make sure that you disable all of these recording options so you're not recording the desktop or anything like that while you are playing. This just frees up these resources so you don't have to worry about that being a factor in lower performance. Being a performance in the performance tab, we're gonna go do tuning. And in here, I just wanted to give this a quick shout out because if you would like to say have any overclock GPU, overclock your memory on your graphics card or undervolt, you can always do this here through their automatic tuning or go to manually tune it if you know what you're doing. Again, this is not a guide for that because I would need a lot more time to properly discuss this, but if you guys would like to see a guide about that from me, uh, let me know. I would love to do some research on it and then make the guide for you guys. What I will say though, is if you have rebar enabled, resizable bar right here, if you have this option to turn this on for sure, as it basically allows your VRAM to be accessed in more than 256 megabyte chunks. And then in the settings right here on the top right, I would go to preferences and then just make sure that you disable the in-game overlay along with basically following how I have it set up here so that you have as little interference from the AMD control panel as possible. I simply leave this as system tray menu so I can access it from here. But besides that, everything else I have turned off like advertisements, game adjustment tracking, tutorials, etc. I've also turned off the animation and effects for what it's worth. That's that's only animation and effects inside of this application. But that's pretty much everything for the control panel right here. As you probably noticed, uh, a lot of this came with the caveat uh, if you're GPU bound because upscalers uh, and supersizers like VSR will only affect your performance if you are GPU bound. And I had to put that caveat because a lot of people simply change these settings willy nilly and don't really understand what it is when they're GPU or CPU bottlenecked. I hope this helped you actually figure out what settings you should be setting inside of this and not just copy and pasting all the settings for the application to try and get the quote unquote best performance. Yeah, if you'd like me to cover more of this stuff in the future, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Uh, and yeah, I will probably be making more AMD videos in the future, almost certainly actually. So stick around for those. And uh, as I get more experience with the card, as I've only had it for a couple of weeks so far, I'm sure I'll be making adjustments to some recommendations in the future based on what I see during some more extended testing especially as we get into the new one. Uh, hit the usual buttons and I'll see you in my streams. The time is posted above or in the Discord, that too. But yeah, for now, thank you for watching. And this is Clem, walking out. Later.